All right, Mom, which room are we starting off with first? Let's start in the boys' room because it's just a little bit simpler, a good way to spend the day. Sounds good. I like it. Emma, <laughs> you got it. Other way. What? Oh, we got collapse the legs. There it is. <laughs> Easy as that. We are here inside bedroom number three, which happens to be the boys' room. Our goal is to get this room completely drywalled, and then we will be moving on to the girls' room. Jeremy got a head start last night by coming in here and doing both of the closets, so we don't have to worry about that. And he also was able to use up a lot of our scraps, which is always a good thrifty thing. Yeah, nice to get that stuff out of the way. So just the walls today, really quick. Two, two hours. days. Two hours. I said two hours earlier. It's two rooms, two days. You can cut me some slack, come on. <laughs> you gotta take that turn away. Why every time does this happen? Ah! Can you make it? Every time. I know you miss these 12 footers. Up! Oh! Put the thing on the bottom, that's oh why. Oh Nowhere to go, but I'm out of practice. Look at you, hung up on the wall. <laughs> Disaster. First sheet is up, tacked onto the wall. We're gonna measure, get our second sheet set in place. The way we got this first sheet up is that we just screwed around the actual border. Once we get all of our sheets set in place on the wall, I'll go back and screw the field. I'm so excited to have the kids come in here and see the drywall up in their bedrooms. They don't know that we're actually working on their rooms today, but drywall makes such a huge impact and it's gonna give them a sense of a little bit of end in sight for all sharing a room. I know that the kids are getting a little tired of being all crammed together in a room. And although it is a bigger space than the trailer was, it's still pretty small. So it's gonna be really awesome for the boys to have their space and the girls to have their space and them to be able to get out all of their decor again, because all of that has been packed up for about two years now. So it's gonna be like Christmas getting all that stuff out again. I believe in you. Okay. Up and over, up and over. Okay, good. <laughs> Stop, Stop laughing. It's so funny watching you. Why? Uh -huh. I get it done. Oh, your little legs are fun. Your little waddle. I, they're baby steps. We need Alright, wall number one is complete. I kind of like going through and just getting all of the fields screwed after all of the panels are up. It's really nice. Feels like it's going a lot quicker. What are you doing back there? I'm sitting here like a cat in the sun. There's a sliver of sunshine. This is what I'm working with. Alright, wall number two. Come on, kitty cat. Oh, I don't it's done. warm right there. Two 12 footers. Come on. I don't get how you're still cold. I don't know. It's almost That's... springtime, Mama. Come on. It's, it's so nice today. February. <laughs> no way. No way it's 40 in here. I am always freezing cold. If it is below 70 degrees, I'm cold. Ridiculous. So. <laughs> it's maybe 42 today. Although the sun is getting higher in the sky and it's that time of year when it actually starts feeling warm again. So it's because it's not cold. <laughs> it's 42. I'm still cold. I cannot wait to turn the heat on in here. By the time we can turn the heat on inside this house, it is actually going to be spring and then we won't need it. Let's get back to work. That'll warm you up. Like a sip of lemonade, and I love the taste. Oh, I love the taste. You're the only song I sing. Like a lullaby of spring in the morning rain. 
I did. Oh, oh no. Bending this corner. Top it up real quick. It's jammed it. That's not good. Jammed it. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Sorry, Mama. Jammed it. <laughs> Most goodest construction company. Here at Gooder and Gooder, we have a tendency <laughs> to strive for mediocrity. What I say about blowing out the edges of your drywall? To not to. <laughs> All right guys, wall number two is completed. We are moving on to wall number three. It's the last full length wall that we have here in the boys' bedroom. I just grabbed a couple of measurements off the corner that we were working on. And if we use four by eight sheets, transition back to those, we should be able to break our seams up above and below the window, making them really small and easy to deal with. Hopefully not very noticeable with the end result. So we'll keep going, get this completed, finish the closet and the boys' room is done. Hello. You like it better than the blue? Yeah. <laughs> Anything's better now. What is in your hair? You have mud in your hair? Is that horse poop? I was riding horses. I know. That's why I'm asking. You got something <laughs> muddy in your hair. It could be either. Gross. You Are you like excited it? about your room? Mm -hmm. okay. Does it look more like a room now? Ooh, yes. I like, I like it a lot of that. More space? Oh, this is like twice the size of the room you guys are all standing in right now. <laughs> I know. Again, practice. You just get better with time, right? Right. Hopefully. And no more tiny little circles that you have to patch. Tiny little circles. We're not doing that again. No. <laughs> Enough of that stuff. <laughs> All right, wall number three is up, it's complete. Smooth sailing, really no issues, just kind of more of the same, getting everything cut to length, uh, buzzing out our openings, easy peasy. 
Yeah, so I think it's incredible to watch these rooms come together. Every time we get a room completely drywalled, it looks totally different. It does, and in this one, we were talking that it looks a lot smaller than we're used to, so. Yeah. It's still a good sizable room. We're gonna have two of our kids shacked up in here. Um, I don't think it'd be a problem, but yeah, it definitely does look smaller. Yeah, it does. The rooms looked, everything looked bigger when it was just framed and you could see through it and the ceilings were high, but once you start capping everything off, it starts to get it's a nice change though and it is progress so we still have a couple more i have a couple more little small pieces to do around the doorway as well as the closet i think i'm gonna get those wrapped up melissa's gonna get the horses buttoned up for the night and get started with cooking dinner because spoiler alert not only did we not complete this in two hours we did not beat this up. <laughs> so close though <laughs> not really so i'll get i'll get those last couple pieces up and then i'll meet you inside okay Now that we work for ourselves, our do-it-yourself attitude extends far beyond our YouTube channel. Yeah, our financial future depends completely on us, so we always try to be really wise with our investment. Nearly every top equity firm is projecting real returns of only 5% or less, and that seriously got us thinking about diversifying our portfolio and making sure that we're preserving our wealth. So we look for new investments to diversify our portfolio. During our research, art kept coming up. We learned that two thirds of billionaire investors allocate 10 to 30% of their overall portfolio to art. From 1995 to 2021, contemporary art prices outpaced the S&P 500 total returns by 164%. With results like that, we were definitely interested. But since we are far from being billionaires, we had no idea where to start until we found Masterworks. Masterworks lets regular people like us invest in the best works by Banksy or Monet for just a fraction of what billionaire art collectors would pay. And the best part is they really know what they're doing when it comes to identifying trending artist markets. Masterworks' two exits to date, Banksy's Mona Lisa and George Kondo's Staring Into Space, returned 32 and 31% respectively to investors. Getting started is super easy. It takes just a few clicks. You visit their website, create an account, browse their artwork, and you can diversify your portfolio with one of the most stable assets around. From there, you hold your shares, or you can sell them on their secondary market. If you want to take advantage and invest in some fine art, click the link in the description to gain priority access. Before getting back to work on the girls' room drywall, we are taking a little break to drive over and check out some horse barns because spring is on the horizon, which means it's going to be barn season. It's going to be just a few short months before we're haying our field again, and we've decided that we're definitely not doing tarps next year. So we want to get this barn up, but we need to get a few ideas as to what we're even looking for, and then we're going to get home and get back to work. So this is one option we were looking at. It's just kind of a cute little traditional style barn, and it's got a couple stalls inside. I saw this back in the summertime, so I wanted to bring Jeremy over here and see if he liked the look of it, and maybe we can do something similar. But we do want the exterior of our horse barn to match our pool barn as well, so it won't be cute and red like this. It's big. It's actually bigger inside than it looks like yeah. it would be from the outside. So on this side is the stalls that they're clearly using this for door storage right now, but it comes with the sliding stalls. And they look like what? 10 by 10? 12 by 12? No, that's gotta be 12 by 12. Yeah, they're pretty big. Yeah, they're really big. Um, and then you can also do two stalls on the other side, but I really want a tack room slash cross tie area for saddling up. And then we need some hay storage as well. I think this is tack, well, yeah, tack room, or some people use them as offices if they're running any kind of business, but it's just a little tack room you can cut exterior door too. Well, oh, this is about 12 by 12 too, right? Yeah, so you can also make this a third stall, you know, if you want to get more horses. <clears throat> Ixnay on the horse A. It's an option. And then up in the loft, you could also keep all your tack up here and then, you know, get that third floor if you're talking about. Not having them. So, yeah, it's got a really big loft area too, which you could also do, there's a hatch door, so you can also do hay storage here and then you can just drop your hay down. But getting it up here would be the tricky part. Do you guys like it? Yeah. What are you doing up here? Waving at the people driving. <laughs> <laughs> totally normal.
this would work, but it, it would be, I think we'd be making some concessions. Right, okay, yeah. I just wanted to show it to you. I know. <laughs> Yeah, see? This is who I'm married to, and he's gonna build a barn. <laughs> Get in the car, Kira. <laughs> Bye, cute barn. So I don't think that Jeremy liked the little red barn as much as I like the little red barn. Well, I didn't dislike it. I just think there's a custom option somewhere out there for us that will suit our needs a lot better. I just want a more open floor plan, I guess. Yeah, and I think he's right because one thing that we did learn with our first barn build is it's never big enough. So always go as big as you can with the space. Jeremy, all that face. With our first barn build, it's almost like you always think that you have built enough space and then as you expand, whether it's animals or tractors or implements or anything, you always end up needing more space than more hay storage. So we'll probably take some of the ideas that we liked from that barn and then apply it to something that's got a little bit more floor space where Jeremy can put his tractor and implements in there as well. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You gotta make sure the tractor is warm at night. It's a fun little family outing. It's always good to get all the kids in the car and take a drive into town, get all our errands done. And tomorrow we are gonna get back to work on the house. We said we were gonna finish this in two days, but instead we decided to take a little break with the kids. So it's still technically two days, yesterday and tomorrow. We're gonna get it done. Oh, mommy, look, I fixed the door. How? I just made a bunch of adjustments. It's not pinched. Oh, it doesn't squeak anymore. No squeaking. It's just a lot easier to open and close. Nice. That's exciting. Way better, huh? Way better. 100 It's still just a heavy door, but... Yeah. Massive improvement. Good job. So Jeremy fixed the door, which is an awesome relief because when we got it installed, we just had the frame a little bowed. And so there was just a pressure point in there that made it really hard to open and it had this horrible squeak. So it's awesome to start the day with having that completely resolved because it was kind of hanging over us. So now we're gonna get back to work and we're gonna get all the drywall up on the girls' room and then we will be completely done hanging drywall in all of the bedrooms. All right, Mama, back wall first, back to the 12 footers. I got you, big boy. I'm glad that door's fixed. So nice. Everything's such a mess around here. We gotta do some cleanup. Prime example. I love you like the summer loves the sun. My dear, I love you like the winter loves the dropping snow. My dear, I love you like. The morning loves to come, but I love you like the river loves to run and flow. Sure. Love you to a pocket. Right on through the end. Uh, oh, my face. Oh, you're squeezing my whole face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, dirty. Dang it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, because it's the way I had the board. Everything will be alright. Honey boo boo. That's not a song. got a honey boo boo. That's not even a real song. It is now. Honey boo boo. The San Francisco tree. Bing bing. Jeremy calls all boo boos honey boo boos now ever since the show. That's what they are. The honey boo boos. <laughs>
balance. Balance. You remind me of the elephants in my Dumbo that are on the little balls, you know, they gotta balance. I remind you of the elephants from Dumbo. Plus the size issue, yeah, because you're you're monstrous and it's like all, all 99 pounds of you. That's what every woman wants to hear. You remind me of the elephants from Dumbo. Hey. <laughs> the tutu wielding elephants. Yeah. Low footer, perfect. We're gonna have to cut it. Let's go! Good call, Mama. Good call. This week, we started to see the very first signs of spring. The sun is a little bit higher and just a little bit warmer, and the familiar sounds of the birds are returning. We still have some winter ahead of us, but we can see the end in sight. I'm feeling the same about this drywall project. It's always so exciting to start something new, but when you're stuck right in the middle of it, it feels endless. But if this past year has taught us anything, it's that steady progress, no matter how quickly or how slowly you're moving, is still progress. So anytime that I feel like a task is insurmountable, I remember this time last year, it was nothing but a hole in the ground. I'm still in disbelief when I stand back and I look at this house. But slowly and steadily, nail by nail, we figured it out. So for now, we put our heads down and we continue, even when it's hard and even when it's boring. Because everything that comes after is really what's gonna make this house come together. The next part is where we make it ours. Floors, fixtures, doors, all the little details that make the dream real. Behind the scenes, a lot of decisions have been made and we cannot wait to show you what we've come up with.